Welcome to worship with us at Canton Central United Methodist Church. I am Erin Yao, and I get to be the pastor of this awesome congregation. I am glad to be in worship with you today and uh, have just a couple of announcements. We were scheduled to have our first leadership team meeting of the year this past Monday, but with the snow, we were unable to gather for that meeting, and we have decided to reschedule that meeting for February the 7th. You can see a list of our leadership. It come, came through in our weekly email the past several weeks. I'll send it out again. If you'd prefer a paper copy of that, if you would just contact us in the church office, we'd be glad to get that list to you. And I do encourage you to continue to pray for all the leaders in our church as we um, seek to uh, prayerfully lead and guide our congregation to fulfill our mission here in our community and around the world. Also, we are in the process of forming back our care teams. Those were people in our church who felt especially called to reach out through phone calls to other members in the congregation to offer care, prayer, and support. Uh, if you would like to be a part of that ministry, if you would uh, reach out to me and we'd be glad to add you onto that list of care providers. We are here today to worship and to praise God together. So with that, will you join me in our call to worship? The Spirit of God is upon us. We are called to be God's people. The Spirit of God is upon us. We are called to be the body of Christ. Come, let us worship God who binds us together in love and service. Let us continue to worship through the singing of the hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. sledding. Mia has ate a ton of snow, not in the yellow snow because that's gross, <laughs> but we've had a lot of fun playing outside. We hope you have too. Um, but sometimes it gets too cold and we have to come inside, don't we? What, that, what do we do when we come inside? We drink hot chocolate. We eat lots of food. What kind of food do we eat? Hot food. What about soup? Do we eat some soup? Yeah. Um, oh, thank you, Mia. We eat graham crackers. Sometimes, though, we just like to come in and we just play. 
Um, we like to play in our fort. We can make it into castles or um, just really cool things. And sometimes when we don't feel like playing with this, we'll just play with our regular toys. And one of those toys is a Mr. Potato Head toy. Okay. How many of, yeah, how many of y'all have Mr. Potato Head toys at home? They're really fun toys. But what if Mr. Potato Head only had ears? Go show him. Go show him. And what if all he had was a bunch of ears everywhere? <laughs> That'd be so funny. What if Mr. Potato Head was only a bunch of eyeballs? <laughs> How would he ever hear anything? That's so silly. Well, luckily, that's not the only pieces our Mr. Potato Head came with, right? Yeah, he has, show him what all he has. I just went to the camera. He has glasses. He has, you want to put them on? He has a hat. Let's put his eyes in here. He has, oops, he just cracked. Um, he has ears. He has feet. He has mouth. He has hands. He has, <laughs> he has all kind of things that make him work and function properly like a Mr. Potato Head. Um, and all of his pieces are important because if all he had were a bunch of eyeballs, how would he walk around? Because he doesn't have feet. If all he had were glasses, he wouldn't have a mouth. He would just be glasses. Mommy. I see you. Um... And so, thankfully, he has all of his pieces because they're all just important, aren't they? We have to have all the pieces for him to work. Yeah. And that reminds me, his nose, that reminds me of something that the Apostle Paul had talked about in the New Testament. Um, he described the church as a body, kind of like a Mr. Potato Head body. Um, he said that the church is the body of Christ and that we are here to do the work of God on earth. Um, last week, Pastor Aaron talked about all different kinds of gifts that we have. Um, and all those gifts are special and important. And she also said that it's important that we use those gifts for our church community. Um, some people might be teachers, some might preach, some might sing or play music, um, some may encourage others, and some of us may have gifts that aren't any of those, but a different gift. And it takes people with all different kinds of gifts to make up our church family. And just because one gift is different from the other doesn't make it any less important than the next gift. Just like Mia's gift might be different from my gift. Yep, your gift is different from my gift, and it's not any less important. And just because some of us may be younger than others doesn't make us any less important in the body of Christ either. We are all needed um, in his church family, and we're all just as important as the next in the church family. In fact, you have a special job for our church right now. And some things that we do for our church might be different than what we do when we're an adult. But God has an important plan to use you as part of his church body. Maybe your job right now is to be a good listener at kids' church. It might be being a good friend to others. It might be um, encouraging some of our church members by writing cards or calling them or dropping by and saying hey if you see them at home. <laughs> And all of these jobs are important, and you are an important part of the church body. Just like Mr. Potato Head has all different kinds of parts and pieces, they're all important. And all of our um, gifts and jobs that we can do for the church are important too, and God wants us to use those for his church body. Um, will you pray with me? We pray for you. Okay. Dear God, thank you for making us unique and special. Please help us to recognize and use our gifts. Help us to work together as your body and help each other to do your will. Thank you for your love. We love you. Amen. All right, you want to come back? Bye. Bye, guys. Good morning.
Today's scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so is it with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy Lord, we give you thanks for your, for your word and for how it still speaks to us today. Lord, I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There is a phrase in the English language that is really difficult for me to say. It is a phrase that for me brings with it all sorts of emotions and strong feelings. This phrase is only three words long, and yet it is something that is so hard for me to get out of my mouth. Each word feels so heavy to me as I say this phrase. Are you ready to hear it? It is the phrase, I need help. I need help is one of those things that is so difficult for me first to admit and then to say out loud. I need help. I wonder if any of you struggle with saying those words, I need help. To say that I need help, I have to first admit to myself that I cannot do something on my own. I have to admit defeat in a way. 
I always tend to think that I am a strong, independent woman and that as a strong, independent woman, I should be able to do things on my own, that I shouldn't need other people's help. And so when I come across something that I cannot do on my own, it takes a lot for me to admit that and then to ask for help and to accept help from other people. You know, there are some things that I could do on my own, but it would be so much easier if I would just ask someone else to help me with that thing. It wouldn't take as much effort or pain if I had someone else there helping me to do the task. I need help. For me, recognizing that I need other people and that I need help is the first step. Then I have to admit it out loud and then ask for that help and then finally accept the help from other people. And most of the time, what I find out is that when I ask for help, other people are happy to offer their assistance. They're happy to help because it gives them a sense of purpose and accomplishment. It makes other people feel good when you ask them for help and they're able to actually help you. Accepting other people's help, I find, gives them an opportunity to use their gifts and talents and to use them in a way that is helpful, that provides purpose and meaning. I find myself saying that to other people a lot, particularly when we as a church are offering help in the form of money to other people. I may have to say to the person receiving the funds, you are going to take this because, because other people gave money to be a blessing to you. And by accepting this gift, you are in turn blessing them, making them feel like they are able to help you and be a blessing to you. We like to think that we are independent people that we can function in the world and do things on our own and that we don't need other people's help. But the truth is that we are not as independent as I think we like to think we are. We actually need each other. And we are called not to be independent, but to be interdependent, to rely on each other, to help each other, to use what we are gifted with and to use our talents for the building up of other people and of the community and of the world. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth addressing many issues within the faith community. The church in Corinth was facing a lot of problems and we're, we've been looking at one of the main problems that they were facing, which had to do with their spiritual gifts. In the first part of chapter 12, Paul points out that all of us have been given a spiritual gift, a gift that came from the Holy Spirit. And while the gifts are diverse and the gifts are all different, they were all given by the one and the same Spirit, and they were given for one purpose. They were given for the common good. The second part of chapter 12 that we heard today is still addressing the issue of spiritual gifts. The church, it seems, had elevated some of the spiritual gifts to be better than some of the other spiritual gifts. And so some of the people that received these spiritual gifts were thinking, oh, well, my gift is better than yours. And it brought with it a sense of pride and jealousy. And some of the people who thought that their gift was not as good as other gifts began to disengage from the life of the church. 
They thought, well, since I don't have this one gift, I'm not as useful and I'm going to just not even try to be a part of this faith community. And this is the problem that Paul was addressing in our scripture that we heard today. He started out by reminding the people of their baptism. He said in verse 12, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. Paul was reminding the people that even though they were diverse, they came from different cultures, different backgrounds, their gifts were different, they were all still one because they were one through their faith in Jesus Christ. And then he expands on this metaphor of the body, reminding the people and reminding us that you are the body of Christ. The human body is very complex. The human body is made up of 60 million cells. Within the human body, there are 60,000 miles of blood vessels. The human body produces somewhere around 36 million heartbeats in a single year. Billions of blood cells are produced every single day by our human bodies. It is hard to comprehend the complexity of our own human bodies. And it's even more difficult for us to comprehend the complexity of the body of Christ. Paul says, you, you are the body of Christ. And the word used for you is not a singular, like you as an individual are the body of Christ. It's a plural you. In Southern, he would be saying, y'all are the body of Christ. All of us who profess faith in Jesus Christ together are the body of Christ. And that doesn't mean that just us as a church here at Canton Central United Methodist Church are the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that just us Methodists within our Canton area are the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that just the churches here in Haywood County or North Carolina or the United States are the body of Christ. It means that all of us around the world who profess faith in Jesus Christ, we are the body of Christ. Now that can be really difficult to comprehend, to think that together we here in our little small community are the body of Christ with people thousands and thousands of miles away. The body of Christ is made up of billions of individual people. The body of Christ is made up of people that live in millions of different settings. Thousands of different languages are spoken in the body of Christ. And there are thousands of unique cultures expressed within the body of Christ. Each of us is a part of that body and we need each other. There were a lot of issues that divided the church in Corinth. 
They were, di they were divided over issues of sexuality, over issues of worship, of what food they could or could not eat. And we are divided still as the body of Christ. We are divided over issues of human sexuality. We are divided over issues of progressive versus conservative, politics, theology, over the ways that we like to worship, the kinds of music that we enjoy hearing and singing in worship. There are so many things that divide us today. And it would be easy if we divided over those things. It would be easier if we decided, well, because we like to sing hymns, we're going to just go to this one church that just likes to sing hymns and, and avoid the churches that like to sing more contemporary kind of music. It would be easy to divide and to say, well, I'm just going to go and worship with people who voted for the same presidential candidate as who I voted for. Or to say, well, because those people don't believe the same things I do, I'm going to go and just not even be a part of that community. But the reality is that we are all part of the body of Christ. We are part of the body of Christ, whether we choose to worship by singing hymns or whether we choose to worship by singing contemporary music. We are part of the body of Christ, whether we voted one way or another. We are the body of Christ. We're all baptized into the same spirit, and we need each other. I realize on a regular basis just how much we as the body of Christ need each other. You know, it used to be pretty clear that if you worshipped in one church that you were different from people that worshipped in another church. And I just don't see those lines quite as clearly anymore. I see it in the ways that our faith communities are pulling together to help our local community. I see that when it comes to helping with flood relief and recovery, it doesn't matter if you're Methodist or Baptist, non-denominational, Church of God, it doesn't matter. We all come together because we are the body of Christ. I once heard a story of a, a woman who was out in front of her house one day sitting on the porch and she watched as a DOT truck came down the road. It was like a work truck, a Department of Transportation kind of vehicle. And she watched as it kind of came to a stop and a worker got out of the truck and labored to dig a hole in the ground on a little strip of land that was there between the sidewalk and the road. He labored and dug a hole and then he walked on a few yards ahead and began to dig another hole. And then this woman watched as a second worker got out of the truck and that worker took the dirt that was there beside the hole and filled that hole back in and continued on to the next hole, filling that one in too. And this went on for several holes before the woman came off of her porch and she approached the workers and she said, what in the world are you doing? And they said, well, we're part of the urban beautification project. The woman responded by saying, well, what good are you doing? How is this beautifying anything? You're just digging holes and filling them back in. And the second worker looked at her and said, well, the man whose job it is to plant the trees is out sick today. 
When one person is missing, or when one person doesn't do what they are supposed to be doing, it leaves a hole. It leaves a hole in the body of Christ. It leaves a hole in our mission, in the mission of making disciples, and in the mission of transforming the world. Now, I know that it is really difficult. It is really difficult to be the body of Christ. We are so diverse. We're diverse in the ways that we go about our lives in the world. We're diverse in how we view politics, how we view public health, how we view just about anything that we can take a stance on. But Paul wrote to the church, and I think it still speaks to us, and says, you are the body of Christ. I know that it would be easier to just say, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with people who think differently than me. I don't want to deal with the divisions or come to a common understanding, so I'm just going to stop and not be a part of that body. But when we do that, it hurts the body because we are interconnected. We are dependent on each other. We need each other. When one part of the body hurts, we all hurt. When one part of the body rejoices, we are called to all rejoice. We need each other. This past week with the snow that was dumped on us, I found that we, my family, needed some help. I know people say, you grew up in Connecticut, you should be used to dealing with the snow. And yeah, I'm kind of used to seeing snow, although it's been a long time since I've lived in Connecticut. I kind of know how to deal with snow, but what I don't know is how to drive in the snow when there aren't snow plows that have come into my neighborhood. Because that's one of the differences of living in the north. There are just more snow plows and equipment, and they go out as soon as it starts snowing. The plows are out working the roads. And we just don't see that as much in the South. We just don't have all the snow, the same number of snow plows. And so my family this week, we found ourselves trapped in our neighborhood with 10 inches of snow on the road and my husband needing to get to work. And so we found that we needed help. We needed help from our neighbors who have all wheel drive. And together, we were able to be the body to get helping each other. Now, it's not always easy to accept help from people, from people that might think differently than we do. And I will admit and, and say that our neighbors voted differently than we did. We don't always agree on everything, but when it comes down to it, we're still neighbors. When we need help, we're there for each other. And the same applies in the church and in the community of faith. We may not always need, agree with each other, but when we need it, we are there for each other. You are the body of Christ. Let us continue to, to work together to build each other up, to support each other. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I invite you now to join with me as we uh, affirm our faith by saying together the things found in the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And we recognize that all that we have is a gift from God. We return to him just a portion of that in order to build up the body of Christ. We use these gifts for the common good to support and love each other. You can continue to give through um, the sending of checks here to the church. You can give online and through text message. And we recognize that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. together as the body of Christ, we recognize that when one part suffers, we all suffer. When one part rejoices, we all rejoice. And so we lift each other up. We lift each other up through our praises and our prayer concerns. And this list of prayer concerns is sent out on a weekly basis through our church email. If you would like to receive those emails, I encourage you to reach out to us in the church office. We'd be glad to put you on that list. This week, we do extend our sympathy to Paula Minsenmeyer on the death of her mother, Lillian Metcalf, who passed away this week. Also ask for prayers for Eddie Morgan, who is recovering from surgery. 
And uh, Amy Aiken has requested prayers for a health concern and just would appreciate your prayers, especially this week. Kathy Pope has requested that we keep her in our prayers. She fell, slipped on some ice, and uh, shattered one of her vertebrae. She is um, at home recovering and doing well, but um, let us keep her in our prayers. Also continued prayers for the health of Jeff Henderson. If you have a prayer request or a praise, we encourage you to uh, reach out to us in the church staff, or you can comment if you're, watch, if you're worshiping with us online. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy Lord, you have formed us in your image. And you have made each and every one of us and called us good. And Lord, we are good. We are created differently and uniquely. And we are all called as part of your body. God, we give you thanks for the ways that you have made us so diverse. And we pray that you would continue to bring us together as the body of Christ. Lord, help us to recognize that in our diversity, we are still one. We are one in our faith in your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, as the body of Christ, we are aware of so many who are hurting right now. God, we pray that you would especially be with those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are facing medical concerns. We pray your healing touch would be upon each of them. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your spirit on us. Help us, Lord, to recognize the ways that you have called us to be your body. Help us, Lord, to seek ways to work together. To work together not for our own individual interests, but to work together for the common good so that others would see your light shining through us. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we go forth from this time of worship, let us go remembering that we are the body of Christ. Go now in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.